Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Creepy Basement, aka the Axe Workshop. So guys, yesterday I found my very first broad axe in the wild. No, I didn't find it in like a cool spot, like someone's grandpa's barn and they gave me permission to go look. It was found in an antique shop, but still, you know, the wild. You know, I didn't just type this in a search bar on eBay and boom, it shows up at my house. So I, you know, I did, I did the legwork guys. I found this in the wild, but, um, why I'm so excited about this broad axe, not only because it's my first one, um, and I don't really plan on making a broad axe collection, uh, which is why I'm extra happy about this because I really do only plan on having one. I'm not out here doing all this carpentry work and hewing beams. I think they're an awesome piece of history. Um, I've always wanted to have at least one of these and I'm really happy this is the one I have because this axe is a G. White axe. And for those of you that don't know, G. White produced axes in Honesdale, Pennsylvania from 1836 to, I believe, 1928 or 1930. And I believe the foundry caught on fire, burned to the ground, or something catastrophic happened, and they stopped producing and manufacturing axes. Um, so why is this so significant to me? Because I live about 20 minutes from Honesdale and I found this in an antique shop in Honesdale. So me and my girlfriend happened to be driving into Honesdale because we absolutely love the back roads and the drive going into Honesdale and Honesdale is a very old, small town. Um, you know, so it, it's pretty cool. We, we like going out there and, you know, we picked up lunch, but while we're out there, we're like, hey, let's stop in the antique shop. So we stop in there, just poke around for a little bit and uh, we find this. So we found a G white axe head or G white, I'm sorry, a G white broad axe, uh, manufactured in Honesdale PA in an antique shop in Honesdale PA. So from the time it was made to now, it never left Honesdale, which I thought is super cool. And obviously being from Pennsylvania, um, I like, and, 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 you know, enjoying old tools and things like that. I really love things that were manufactured in Pennsylvania. I think they're extra special to me. Um, and it gets cooler guys, it gets cooler. So not only is it a G white produced in Honesdale, I find it in an antique shop in Honesdale. The date stamped into my head here is 1836. So this is a first year G white. So if I were to have any one broad ax in my collection, if I were to only have one, you know, like I said, I don't plan on having a ton of these things, man, did I come across a gem. And the head's in beautiful condition. I know it looks like there's a crack here, but it's not. It's like some clear spray paint built up. Someone decided to clear spray paint this thing, whether it was either to try to preserve it or make it seem more flashy since they have it in an antique store or uh, maybe someone had it hanging up. But uh, G. White heads, they didn't really have these extravagant flashy stamps like, you know, the Black Ravens and things like that. Yet they're much harder to come by uh, than a Black Raven. I, I've had um one g white before and i sold it like an idiot because back when i had it i was very new into axes i didn't really know about them and it didn't look cool to me and uh i got rid of it for like 40 bucks um and uh yeah so they're super hard to come by and like i said guys being from pennsylvania being right down the road from honesdale this this axe is super special to me and so i thought we're gonna we're gonna revamp this thing a little bit. This head or this handle is barely holding on. Like I'm just pulling I would out of there. So uh, in today's video, you know, it's not gonna be a super long video, but I just want to get this old head, uh, old handle out. Maybe I, the, the bit doesn't even need uh, file work. It is really nice condition, no chunks out of it. But I want to get this clear uh, spray paint off of it, and then maybe put a stone to it. And if we have some time, maybe put a sheath on it. But uh, Definitely not in today's video, but sometime in the near future, whether I film it or not, I'm going to try to make my own axe hand, uh, broad axe handle for it. See how this is like curved? I imagine you have to like steam bend it or something like that. Because if you cut it out a piece of wood that way, you'd violate all this grain and it would be super weak. So I have a bunch of vintage handles that I extracted out of heads that I found. So what I think I'm going to do is um, watch a couple videos, obviously, on how to uh, steam bend and form handles, but I'm going to repurpose a vintage handle and I'm going to uh, try to make my own handle for this thing. And then, um, you know, eventually we'll make a video 
using this because I think that would be so awesome. So I'm really happy I was the person that found this ax. Being from PA, being down the road from Honesdale, uh, this thing obviously didn't move very far and I'm gonna give this thing a second shot and we are going to hew a beam with this one day. But for now, we're gonna clean it up, get this old handle out of here and then, um, yeah, I don't know. Guys, I'm just super stoked about this thing. Um, I'm sure you guys can tell. I hope you're just as excited as I am. So I'm going to quit running my mouth and we're going to um, start cleaning this thing up. Alrighty guys, so I already got one piece of the eyewood out of here. Um, I could just go ahead and cut this handle off and slide it out that way, but I would like to keep the handle in one piece because I want to use it as a template for when I make the next handle. That way I can get the, the curve uh, pretty close. I'd like it to be accurate uh, as possible. So. Like I said, I want to try to keep this in one piece uh, if I can, so I have a nice template to go off of. So we're just going to try to get the rest of this eyewood out of here from that broken piece. We should be able to slide the bottom out, or the rest of the handle out of the bottom. Yeah, perfect. That was the uh, that was the easiest head removal I have ever done. Usually they don't go like that. Alrighty, so I'm going to try and remove some of this clear spray paint off with some acetone. Um, hopefully it comes off. If not, we're going to do a little wet sanding to try to get this spray paint off. Sometimes it can be pretty stubborn to get uh, spray paint off a rusted head like this because it really gets in all the pitting and whatnot. Um, one, I want to get the spray paint off because I want it to have its natural patina. And two, uh, I don't want to put my stone on it because um, my stone will load up with all the spray paint. And I don't want to do that either. I really wish people wouldn't uh, spray paint vintage axe heads, but I, I do understand why they do it. And, you know, I can't be super mad at them because they, they don't know, you know, they're not doing what we do. They just want them to look shiny and appealing uh, to people. Um, so they shoot them with clear spray paint, but I really wish they wouldn't do that. So all this is doing is making the spray paint super tacky. So I think what we're gonna have to do is, um, I got some water here, some 600 grit. Maybe I'll try 320 first. Um, I don't wanna put it on the sanding wheel because uh, I don't want it to go too fast and really rip through um, the the well-earned patina here and, and start making it too shiny. So I'm gonna try to hand wet sand this um, and get some of this clear spray paint off because um, yeah, it's just awful. So we got all the clear spray paint off the head, stoned the, uh, I guess you would call it the bevels and the, well, I guess it's a bevel. It's like a chisel grind, but we, we stoned it nice and smooth, crazy sharp. Um, you know, normally I wouldn't make a head sharp, this sharp, any kind of sharp before putting the handle on it because it makes the hanging process and moving this head around that much more dangerous. Um, it's way easier to get cut this way and it's way easier to damage the bit itself too. So like I said, generally I would not do this, but I wanted to do something to the head today. And once I got into the stones, I got a little carried away. I said, well, we're already here. We might as well finish it. So, um, I think what we'll do before we hang it is we'll make a sheath for it. That way we can protect the bit and protect myself, um, while we hang it. But man, I got to say after doing the bit, um, and working on this head a little bit here, I'm getting more and more excited to use this thing. So um, I'm probably gonna move my butt on this a little quicker than I thought I was going to and get a handle put in here because I really wanna try this thing out. I would love to hew a beam. Um, I can't say that I'm gonna take a whole tree down to like a six by six, but we're definitely gonna play around a little bit and, uh, and, and see how it goes. Maybe we'll do like one whole side of a tree. I have no idea. I can't tell you what I'm gonna do yet, but definitely looking forward to using this in the future. 
So with that said, guys, I think that's going to be about it for today. I know it wasn't a super long video. I probably talked more than actually did anything. But um, yeah, so that's my first uh, broad axe, hewing axe, whatever you want to call it. G. White, uh, manufactured in Honesdale, found in Honesdale. Uh, couldn't be more happy with it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and we'll catch you on the next one.